Hello good people, welcome to Keep Left, your all car guide to all things cars and all things automotive. As always, my name is Kev, the host who knows most about cars. Today we have the 2010 Mark X. It is said that nature absolves a vacuum and guess what car manufacturers do the same thing Toyota realized that there is a gap in the luxury car space and this was their answer to that this is the second generation Mark X with the first generation featuring the more caviar design and the sex second generation realizing a more boxier styling in their design this particular model feature, features the same uh, engine and uh, gearbox as the first generation. The first generation uh, started from 2004 to 2009 with the second generation picking it up from 2009 to 2019. So basically what I'm trying to say is this is the last generation Mark X unless Toyota say that they're coming with a third generation. So now more about the car. Let's check what is under the bonnet. Under the bonnet of the Mark X is a 2.5 liter uh, engine, the V6 engine. This particular model happens to be the most common uh, engine, the 4G RFE engine. There are other variants of the same, the 2G RFE engine, which features a 3.5 liter engine. There's the 3G RFE engine, which features a 3 liter engine. By the way, I have, an, uh, I have a video about engines and their functioning and basically how to know what does what in an engine. If you have, haven't watched the same video, I'll have a link on the description of this video you can watch. And there's a link that will be popping up anytime from now. Back to the markets. Uh, this particular 2500 V6 engine produces 200 horsepower, which is uh, quite strange because the first generation of Mark X employing the same size of engine was producing 212 horsepower. I don't know why Toyota went the direction of detuning the engine, but maybe it works for the better of the car. Mark X's have uh, two variants of gearboxes, with the first variant being uh, the rear wheel drive, uh, six speed uh, automatic transmission, and the second variant being the four wheel drive, five speed automatic transmission enough about the engine and the gearbox of the mark x now let's go to where you spend the most time while you're enjoying the car the interior of the car the interior of, um, of the mark x features a very luxurious interior i like uh, the uh, the half leather interior with the wood trim which is good and this is a, a good example of the leather interiors that i was telling you uh, in the first generation this particular leather interior was prone to cracking uh, Mark X was able to fix that in fix that in this generation of Mark X. This particular model uh, has uh, a, a good uh, wood trim finish with more than enough uh, compartments to put your cups, your phones. So you're sorted in terms of you being inside the car. You don't need to struggle so much as to where to put things. Uh, this uh, particular car, the owner has gone a step ahead to put a uh, an Android radio, which is good and helps uh, into the feel of the car. Because at the end of the day, when you're inside a car, you need to feel like you are at home. And uh, when I sit in this car, I feel like I'm in a big home, isn't it? Uh, furthermore, the owner of this particular car has also went the extent of uh, just doing a leather interior for the seats. This is probably to just protect the fabric interior because the Mark X's come with uh, a fabric interior. I like the combination of black and uh, the wood trim. It gives you a very almost classical finish to this car with the silver trims uh, on the side of uh, the, the, the center console. It's a good place uh, to be. I approve. And I think uh, if they were looking to bring out a very luxurious interior, they got it well. Something else I can note is the legroom. 
uh the legroom in this car is very good it's excellent in fact uh any size of person tall short is able to fit in this car and the good thing about this interior again is uh it has uh electrically controlled seats so you can just uh, move the seat to a space where you need which is good and you still see i have enough space with the seat all the way to the front and the story is the same at the back wow <laughs> The space at the back is more than enough for what Toyota went for in terms of uh, enticing the luxury client who might want to buy a Toyota. I can understand this space is more than enough. The legroom is good. You can stretch as much as you want. And uh, even at the top, this, the story is the same. You have more than enough space if you are a, a tall person. And uh, as I said, the owner of this particular model decided to do a leather interior, which is good. It protects the fabric. Uh, wow, this is nice. I understand what Toyota went for in terms of this particular car. The only thing that um, puzzles me in terms of uh, the back interior is, if you look down here, uh, is uh, the transmission tunnel. Now, this transmission tunnel happens to be so high that uh, the, the, only, the, the number of people who can sit at the back of this particular car is reduced to two. This is why. If someone was to sit in the middle, this is the posture they might have to take. You see, which is <laughs> ridiculous. Okay, let's say that this particular person maybe wants to put the legs apart. You see, if now you sit apart, you end up now uh, disturbing the person who's sitting on this side. So as much as my, my, uh, Toyota might say that this car is a five-seater, this is not a position that someone can enjoy for probably a, a, a long ride. The other thing I love about uh, the Mark X is the back seats, and especially the ones at the edges are uh, adjustable you can adjust the angle by just pulling this particular button uh, lever sorry the seat goes back and you can, you can lean back which is good probably uh, for long journeys you can just lean back and sleep or uh, enjoy the ride very good now let's go to the boot so in the boot uh, the space is good Again, the, love, uh, the owner of this Mark X is a lover of music, so they have a boombox at the back, and you see the space left is still more than enough. I know the people who buy Mark Xs will not be buying the Mark X because of the boot space, but it's good to have. You never know why, when you need this space. Now, enough about the car and the creature comforts. Let's take a ride so that you can see how this baby feels when you're on the road. Sindio, follow me. Wow, it's, uh, the weather just changed uh, dramatically, but uh, we proceed and we go on. Uh, the, the interior of the Mark X is, uh, is well-sized in, in terms of uh, driving position. I feel like uh, I'm inside the cockpit of a plane, <laughs> so to say. Uh, it's very comfortable, by the way. I love that the armrest for this particular model is uh, up high. You can put your hand and uh, just feel like you're in a very comfortable uh, sitting position and uh, you can drive far. In fact, the way the Mark X is set up to be, in my opinion, it is set up to for for long long range traveling. And why do I say that? The way I feel uh, while I'm seated on this uh, driver's seat, I feel like you can actually go for a very long distance without actually you being tired. And some of the reasons that uh, cause drivers to be tired is the sitting position. For example, you can see how my body is angled up in a almost right angle. Uh, that's a good driving position because if, the, for example, the, the sitting position would be such, I would end up uh, having uh, have, being so tired at the end of a drive. But the fact that the, the seat is in this position, it helps so much. And uh, with the seat controls that you have in this car, you can actually change the, the angling of this. Uh, if you can just come down here, you can change the angling of the seat electronically again. It rises and uh, it goes down so you can support your your lower uh, thighs and that helps into going into into the drivability of the car now the only thing that i feel that is not ideal uh, with the, the drive terrain of this particular mark x is the fact that uh, this is the two wheel drive two uh, rear wheel drive uh, uh, version and uh, you can actually feel for example right now it is uh, raining. You can tell that the car is uh, almost feeling like it is pushing hard. The car has plenty of power, by the way, on the on the pedal. 
but you can feel like the car is pushing. Albeit, the fact that uh, cars that are rear-wheel drive usually feel more planted on the road. Uh, and this is aided by the fact that there is actually very good weight distribution on the Mark X. Uh, the weight distribution Toyota states to be 54% at the back and 46% in the front. This is aided by the fact that there is the, there is the fuel tank at the back and there's also the, there's also the differential and at the middle there is the drive axle. That helps the car to be planted low. Uh, and this weight uh, counters the weight that is in the front, as opposed to having a car that is front wheel and also the gearbox is in the front. The back is usually left with little little uh, weight. So the fact that this car has a 54, 46 uh, weight distribution, it feels planted on the road. Uh, Mark X owners complain uh, of the fact that uh, the, the the fact that the car is uh, rear wheel drive. You feel at times like, for example, if you are to go to slippery grass, the car will skid a lot. And that is common with the rear wheel drive cars. Uh, but uh, when you go to tarmac, the situation is a bit better because the car feels good. In fact, this car is so uh, is, is, is uh, well packaged in terms of the power that when you just step on the foot, this car goes. You see? And it goes and it picks up speed. Just like that, we are at 100. <laughs> that is the beauty of having a naturally aspirated engine and in fact the fact that it is a naturally aspirated engine and it, has, it, it is a very big engine the car picks up speed like no one's business that is very good for the Mark X so uh, who are the competitors of the Mark X uh, in its uh, space of uh, luxury cars for the Toyota brand? Uh, some of the competitors, I would say, would be the Skyline, uh, the Nissan Skyline. Uh, there is uh, the um, Nissan Fuga and Tiana, which uh, have the same engine. Uh, and uh, the biggest competitors of uh, the Mark X would have to be now their German competitors because... You can't help feel that uh, anyone who buys Mark X is buying it for the luxury and the power, isn't it? So now the question would be, if at all you, you're buying the Mark X for its luxury and power, uh, the biggest uh, competitors or uh, cars that you can buy in that space would be probably the Mercedes E-Class, the BMW 5 Series. And if you noted earlier on in this uh, video, you'd see that the dimensions of this particular Mark X come close to the dimensions of a 5 Series BMW and also the uh, the E-Class uh, e -class, uh, Mercedes-Benz, the E200. And I also can't help feel the fact that when Toyota were designing the Mark X, their design basis was probably the two German cars. Uh, I am. I don't know. Uh, Toyota, if you know, hala. But I feel like that was the starting point. We want cars uh, to look and behave like this. Because remember, the 5 Series BMW and the Mercedes E-Class, they are all rear-wheel drive cars with some Mercedes uh, having four-wheel drive, like the form formatic uh, versions uh, being four-wheel drive. So the Mark X is a front-engine rear-wheel drive with four-wheel drive versions. We have the same versions in the BMWs and the Mercedes who have been doing the luxury car scene for longer than most cars have been uh, have been alive. So you, uh, when you are when you are looking at the Mark X, you can't help feel like like uh, it's basically trying to fill that gap, which is good, and uh, it has achieved that because Mark X sales in Kenya are off the roof. Certainly, you won't be buying this car for its uh, fuel economy. Remember, the 2,500cc two engine will obviously be a guzzler. But uh, Toyota were well aware of the same, and uh, this car comes uh, with an eco mode, uh, which will help in reducing the amount of fuel that the car uh, produces. The on, on town runs, uh, where you are probably within the town and you go short distances, the car will consume a lot of fuel. But in long distances, this car is superb in terms of uh, fuel consumption. Because remember, with a big engine, this car requires uh, little, uh, little uh, fuel to produce a lot of power. So when you press on the pedal, 
it actually gets to speed very easily as opposed to a car with a smaller engine where you have to press so much on the gas pedal for you to get power so for for as i was saying for long journeys this car is both comfortable and will be economical uh, so to say so in conclusion i definitely understand why toyota plugged into the luxury car market because essentially they've been able to get more than enough customers especially in africa and in kenya to be precise the reasons why you should buy this toyota is it will never fail the engine and drivetrain in this car are bulletproof they are reliable like no one's business the only thing that will uh, probably you can't be hesitant about buying the mark x is the fact that their prices depreciate a lot so now when you go to prices the prices of the second hand mark x in the kenyan market will be anywhere for example this uh, second generation is anywhere between the ballpark of 800,000 to 1.9 million that is the very latest model of the mark x even the dogs agree <laughs> so thank you so much until next time peace